The problem with professionals in YouTube boxing. Today I'll be going through why the pro boxers who have been involved with YouTube boxing have had a mostly negative reaction by everyone in the space. Before we start I want to make it clear that I don't think it's a bad idea to have pros in the crossover boxing as it legitimizes crossover boxing but later in the video I'll explain why the pros are having a negative impact in the space. To start off we'll be going over the pros of having professional in crossover boxing. Here are the pros. Having professionals compete in YouTube boxing helps to legitimize the space as seen on Misfits 3 as Greg Hardy vs Razum Rahman Jr. After that fight more and more pros wanted to be on Misfits. When Jake Paul knocked out Tyrone Woodley a former MMA champion in devastating fashion it showed the world that most YouTuber boxer don't mess about and put it that work in the gym. The Cons But with all the good that the pros bring to YouTube boxing they're not all perfect and bring a lot more problems with them. Dylan Dennis Dylan Dennis is a 2-0 MMA fighter who was gonna face KSI in the ring in January 2023 but pulled out two weeks before the fight because he didn't have a team not even a coach. I got a phone call saying Dylan is pulling out of the fight. The real reason is, uh, from what they said to me, is that he's underprepared, he has no coach, he might be struggling with weight, even though there's no rehydration. Very unprofessional for a professional fighter. Floyd Mayweather. Now Floyd Mayweather is easily in the top 5 greatest boxers of all time with a perfect record of 50-0. So why is he fighting YouTubers? He has fought Logan Paul and Deji with both of the fights being boring and in the case of the Deji fight not even giving him any respect in the ring. YouTube boxing isn't bad for the sport. Exhibition fights with a GOAT versus a YouTuber who has only been boxing for a few years is very bad for the sport. Hazem Rahman Jr. Hazem Rahman Jr. is a 12 and 2 boxing being the son of Hazem Rahman and who was gonna fight Jake Paul back in 2022 but pulled out of the fight due to not being able to make the weight. Uh, I signed a contract to make 200 pounds within the, the three or three and a half weeks that I had to do it, but I couldn't do it. I sent, my body simply would not let me do it, would not let me get down to 200 pounds. Ben Askarin. Oh Ben Askarin, the man how ruined his legacy so he can get some money. The less said about him the better. Money, Jake, get money, Jake. Idris Virgo. Idris Virgo is a 13 and 0 just coming off of a win against Anthony Taylor but after his fight he said this. I want a belt, so I want Slim. So Slim if you're watching this, you get through Tom Zulay, but you might not, but I'm coming for you next. I want that belt Slim baby. Let's go! Yep that's right a 13 and 0 professional boxer just called out Slim. Idris Virgo shouldn't be calling out YouTubers he should be calling out pro boxers. Tommy Fury Last but not least Tommy Fury the man who pulled out of the Jake Paul fight twice. Jake Paul and Tommy Fury are set to fight in February 2023 and it looks like this time it will happen but Tommy is still being unprofessional by not showing up to face to face. Alright so we were supposed to do uh, face to face with Tommy. You're used to this now. Do you know what's happening yeah. for you, brother? Africa? So bro, I so Tommy disappeared, bro. Tommy, you're fucking scared and you're soft as for that. If you want to see what will happen to the loser of Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury, click here.